All right, man, peace. So as most of you brothers probably know by now, the biggest trade before the trading deadline of 2019 was not Anthony Davis being traded to the Lakers or to whoever. It ended up being Kristaps Porzingis being traded by the New York Knicks to the Dallas Mavericks for draft picks, DeAndre Jordan, Dennis Smith Jr., and Wesley Matthews. Of course, that caused a conniption, a hissy fit from Mr. Max Kellerman, the resident emotional super liberal Caucasian Jew on the Stephen A. Smith and Max Kellerman show. I stated in great detail during that segment when I made the video about the Porzingis trade that Max Kellerman was dead wrong. Stephen A. Smith kind of touched on it. He mentioned how Max was clearly overly emotional due to his personal issues with James Dolan. Now they have Jalen Rose in studio and Jalen Rose is going to expound on that sentiment of how much the Knicks got back in the trade and how well they did in the trade and the fact of the matter is that the New York Knicks have won the trade. And now this is going to cause Max Kellerman to have an even greater psychological breakdown, which is common among super liberals. So, of course, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. I hear whispers about good things about the Knicks, so stay woke, Knicks fans. After the blockbuster trade that sent Kristaps <laughs> Porzingis to the Mavs in exchange for young star Dennis Smith Jr., two first-round picks in expiring contracts, our Bobby Marks now predicts the Knicks are going to have a league-high $71 million in salary cap space this offseason. Jay- the Knicks going to get somebody. Jalen. Yes. What should the Knicks do this offseason? The Knicks won this trade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, the Knicks won this trade. And look, <laughs> look dead at Max Kellerman. <laughs> I couldn't wait to come and sit eye to eye with you and let you know that. The Knicks won the trade. Yes, you idiot. They won the trade. They traded that third race star that you're so infatuated with, Christos Porzingis, the player who's going to have a total physical breakdown over the next five years, you're going to find out. That man is built like a house of cards. He's going to collapse within the next five years. Once again, he's going to have a couple of seasons in Dallas, maybe even three or four seasons, where people are going to say, wow, the Mavericks really got the best of this trade, or the Mavericks were able to get a great player back. But I think that he's going to be another Yao Ming. Remember, Yao Ming, look up his stats. Yao Ming was percolating in the early 2000s made about four or five consecutive all-star teams and not just because the people in China were voting for him but because he was a very good player borderline great player very impactful for the Rockets for about four or five years before his body broke down that is going to be Christos Porzingis and once again he was a malcontent he was a player who did not want to be there and he was nowhere near good enough to be doing as much bitching and complaining as he was doing he just wasn't he had to go hey this is I'm gonna give you some inside information go ahead Christoph Porzingis has been unhappy with the Knicks since he got drafted and got booed. Wouldn't surprise me at all. From what I've seen from Christoph Porzingis in certain interviews, he seems to be very petty. He seems to be very spoiled. And he seems to believe that everything is supposed to go his way. It would not surprise me if things go sour in Dallas. It would not surprise me if he has a falling out with Luka Doncic over who gets the ball more. He's been unhappy since that day. He's been operating out of spite since that moment. Yes, he made an all-star, but did he lift him and take him anywhere? The last time I checked, he ain't played in no playoff games. At all. Okay, so if you keep and Chris forget, off, And don't forget, he called for Phil Jackson to bid up out of there. He went to Dolan. So, so I want him in there. So, so back, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a crystal ball. If y'all keep Chris Porzingis with the Knicks, they become New Orleans with AD in the Eastern Conference. At best. At best. That's assuming that Porzingis ever even starts to approximate Anthony Davis and his output. We saw Christos Porzingis fully healthy prior to getting injured last season. He was about 21 points, 8 rebounds a game. He was not Anthony Davis. That's what they become. But a oh, worse AD because Christos isn't as good as AD. You're blaming. Thank you, Molly Karam. Hey, Christos on um, being salty with Knicks fans for booing him at the draft, and I'm blaming the problem with the relationship with the Knicks on the Knicks, which is why the Knicks okay. have a problem with the relationships with everybody. Correct. And so now let me tell you why that's they won the trade. That's on the Knicks. That's me, why they lost the trade. Me, let me tell you why they won the trade. Dallas, it's great that they paired up Luka and KP. Like, they're going to be amazing together. They're going to be a terrific dynamic duel. But the Mavs gave up a first-round pick to get Luka. Uh-huh. They gave up two first-round picks to get Chris Stapps. So they're out of that mix. Because okay. they got two franchise players. Correct. Now. Allegedly they do. Hey, so let's talk about what the Knicks going to have now. Look up Luka Doncic's numbers. Look up his stats. And I say this all the time about very impactful rookies. 
People look at impactful rookies and just assume that they're going to get better year after year. Luka looks like a player who's going to make a lot of crazy shots, a lot of clutch shots, but he has a very James Harden-esque approach to offensive basketball. He is not a proficient jump shooter at all. And I know that sometimes people assume that somebody can shoot just because they're Caucasian, but he's not proficient from, from the outside. He's only shooting about 42, 43%. Now, will he become a better offensive player with Kristaps Porzingis in the lineup? Because you would assume that Kristaps will open up opportunities for him, maybe take away some of the attention of the defense from Luka with Kristaps in the lineup. We'll find out. And of course, you expect him to become a better player in the offseason. But I think that Luka Doncic has a roof. I'm not quite sure how much better he can get if he does not become more proficient and more of a dead-eye jump shooter than what he already is. But we'll find out. Right now, I think that if Luka comes back next season and averages 23 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds, that's a great uptick for him. But I'd be watching how he fits in with Kristaps Porzingis more than anything else. And defensively, they're going to be compromised because Luka can't guard anybody. The Knicks have their first round pick this year, which could be number one overall. 85% chance it's not. Okay, but it could be. 16%. Okay, so you got to be, you, you can't win if you ain't in. Agreed. They have two max spots they could get. And when you hear whispers like KD may come if he leaves, Kyrie may come if he leaves. There's something to that Kyrie and KD thing. I'm not going to predict that they're going to sign with the Knicks, but there's something to that. You got to be a player in that. And if those guys don't come, oh, no. maybe I get Butler, maybe I get Kimba. And I have two all-stars Butler that I can parlay but- him into. Butler and Kemba is the typical mistake the Knicks would make. They will never win a championship giving Maxis to Butler and Kemba. There'll be a second round playoff. I would agree with that, but sometimes, Max, you got to settle for a hamburger when you can't get the steak. Playoff team, my whole life like this with the Knicks. At best, they're a second round playoff team. Here's the problem with the whole thing about Porzingis. Any franchise winds up with Chris Stapp's Porzingis. You are a bum franchise if with cap speed, if you dig yourself cap holes, Heading into a free agent class with Porzingis, that makes you a bum franchise. It means you're poorly, not just poorly managed, but stupidly managed. Well, Max Kellerman let the record show that the Knicks are currently under new management. Porzingis is still mad about what occurred during the old management's tenure. And that's his right. If he still wants to be mad, even with the new management, it's up to him. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes you're at a job, you work in a corporation where they switch out managers, they swap managers, and the fuckery continues, and you just want out. So it was best for Chris Stapps that he got traded away. I just think that he was surprised and shocked about how it happened because he thought that he was going to be the dumper, not the dumpy. He kept running his mouth, talking shit, and they dumped him before he could dump them. With Porzingis, or, or I'm picking there because he was hurt last year. No, no, no. If, you, if, if, if I ran the Knicks and I had Chris You wouldn't stop Porzingis, him from getting injured. Time out. I would make sure not to have anything on the books except for Porzingis heading into this class, and then I would tell the world and the KDs and the Kyries of the world, come play with Chris Stapps Porzingis. But, but, but that's not, but, but that's. <laughs> you see how this fool gets whenever he talks about Porzingis? What the hell has Porzingis done in the NBA to deserve anybody to be that excited about him? I mean, give me a break. But that's not a realistic scenario. It is realistic. But not for- no, it's not realistic at all because, once again, Chris Stapps, does not want to be in New York. I have no idea why Max Kellerman can't grasp that other than the fact that he's going through another another emotional meltdown due to him being super liberal. And I say that because super liberals have <laughs> they have this belief that their emotions are supposed to carry the day. This is the first time in 10 years, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the Knicks have had flexibility. Yes, it is. Thank you, sir. It might be the first time in damn near 25 years. The last time that I can remember the Knicks having some type of financial flexibility is in the offseason in between the 95-96 season and the 96-97 season when they signed Chris Childs and Allen Houston and Larry Johnson. It's taken the Knicks a very long time to dig out of that hole. They've been handcuffed, Max. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How about this? Let let me say one one more thing and I want Stephen A to go. They're going to parlay Chris Stapps Porzingis one player into six players. Absolutely. Well, let me see. Into six players. I, 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 I. And you could take some of those first-round draft picks and maybe trade them in a package to get another prominent player. Who knows? 
I've, I've explained this to Max. He's hard headed about this because he's emotional about Dolan, and that's what this is. He's emotional about Dolan. Simple as that. That's why. That's why you really can't pay attention to him. Here's the thing. Your analysis would be on point if you were saying, "Okay, it's not about Porzingis. It's all about the Knicks." You're complaining about what the Knicks were before Porzingis arrived and how it's contaminated. The, the, the environment, the confines. What we're saying is, this is what the situation was with Porzingis. He walked into the New York Knicks office last Thursday, said, get me up out of here. Not only did he say that, he said, if you don't, I'm going to sign a qualifying sign the offer. Knicks. A qualifying offer is a one-year deal that ensures he's an unrestricted He would agent never do that. The next season. Listen, the point is, he was basically saying, I'm not, I'm going to make it so unattractive, no one's going to want to come here. They had to right. do this. Right, right. Absolutely, and they had nothing to lose because they were not winning with him. Right, right, hold on, hold on. Let me, I want to, I want to respond to that. He was never going to do that. Coming off, he was the, never going to do what? Sign a one-year qualifying offer, coming off a catastrophic injury when he could be set for life with $130 million something dollars. Okay. Bullshit, he's a player coming out of the European League. If things didn't pan out here, he would just go back and play for the Spanish team. That's all. Okay, that, that wasn't going to happen. That was a bluff. But the main thing is this. Wasn't a bluff. They would still have the same draft pick they would have had this year. They should not have given Tim Hardaway Jr. contracts or been in cap problems in the first place. Tim, I would agree with that, but you know, Tim Hardaway's been pretty serviceable. Tim Hardaway Jr.'s contract allowed that deal to take place. Right, you shouldn't have traded him. No, they had to get out from under cap problems, and so they did that using Porzingis. If you have a Chris Stapps Porzingis, just like the Rockets once had a lot... Dude, there were, just, there were just so many reasons why that trade had to be made. As Jalen Rose just touched on, the deal, the contract that they gave to Tim Hardaway Jr. allowed them to offset the contract that they were getting back, and they could package Chris Stops a malcontent with them, get everybody out. There's nobody that, that the Knicks got rid of that they're going to miss. They're not going to miss Trey Burke. They're not going to miss Tim Hardaway Jr. They're not going to miss Chris Stops Porzingis. Let them all go. Elijah Wan, I'm not saying he's necessarily Elijah Wan, oh, or, the, or, or the Spurs had Duncan, yeah. or, the, or, or the Mavs had Nowitzki. I mean, I don't know. Let's wait and see. The now listen to the guys that Max Kellerman is comparing Christoph Porzingis to. This is how you know he's a fanboy. Meaning what? He's bugged out his fucking mind. He just compared Christoph Porzingis to Hakeem Elijah Wan, Tim Duncan, and Dirk Nowitzki. Do you believe this shit? Hakeem Elijah Wan, <laughs> Hakeem Elijah Wan, Dirk Nowitzki, and Tim Duncan are three of the top Probably 25 players of all time. Let me wind this back a little bit. The point, Zingas, just like the Rockets once had Elijah Wan, I'm not saying he's necessarily Elijah Wan, oh, or, the, or, or the Spurs had Duncan, yeah. or, the, or, or the Mavs had Nowitzki. I mean, I don't know. Let's wait and see. The point is, they didn't use those guys to get out of cap problems. They built championship squads around those guys. There was no need for them to use those guys to get out of cap problems. And it came Elijah Wan's second year, they got to the finals. And Tim Duncan's second year, they won the finals. Dirk Nowitzki, you knew who he was by his second year, and they had Steve Nash and Michael Finley with them, and they were going to the playoffs. They were going to the second round. I'm not quite sure if they ever got to the third round uh, with those Mavericks teams, but you knew who they were. You knew what they were very early in Nowitzki's career. Right now, with, with Porzingis, we don't know what the hell he is. You should still have cap space to sign both KD and Kyrie using Porzingis as a lure, not have to use him to dig out of problems that you've created. Porzingis was running around telling other players not to come there because he didn't like the coach, David Fisdale. He didn't like the management. You can't have a cancer in your body. I don't care if it's a beautiful woman. That cancer still has to be cut out of her body or she's going to die. Max, I guarantee you, when you see, and, we, and nobody mentioned Dennis Smith Jr., Who's actually a player? They, they got passed him on him in the draft. I'm just saying. They so what? They got him back, dude. I mean, they keep talking about this Dennis Smith Jr. shit. They're gonna end up getting rid of him anyway. Because Why you say yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. 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 But but so so look. So, 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 so remember this now. We're, we're gonna remember this conversation. They got Dennis Smith Jr. Who's gonna be a player? They're gonna get three first round draft from a team pick. that's gonna be very good because they have Porzingis and, and they're a player in a 2019 class. They would have been that anyway. I would take that over Porzingis. But it's not an either or. That's the yes, problem. Yes, it is. It's all yes, it was an either or scenario for the simple fact that Kristaps Porzingis did not want to be there. He did want to be there, and. <laughs> This dude, Max Kellerman, he can't get it through his head. You know why? Because he's suffering from PTSD. And that's the point.
And that's what fans oftentimes have. They have post-traumatic stress disorder from giving their soul to a franchise or to an individual as opposed to being able to deduce things based off of empirical data or based on empirical data, facts and reasoning, so on and so forth. That's what allows you to approach things with a stable mind and to be able to appraise what's actually going on. Max Kellman can't do that. He tries to act like he's based in logic and reason, but he's really not. He's based in his feelings. But anyway, peace.